Spark River Harris taking on Ishpeming at Ishpeming. Hold up, wasn't that last week's matchup? Yes, yes it was, but they were in for a rematch for the first round of the playoffs after an early score put Ishpeming up 6-0. On their second drive, all John Cork and the first team Westpac running back was dominating out of the backfield. Let's give his offensive line some credit. He was going untouched into the secondary. Take a look at this touchdown run. He had enough time to pretty much come to a halt just one step into the end zone. Look at that. Oh, and he's done. He doesn't even have to run. That score and the successful two-point try made it 14-0 from that point on. It was all Ishpeming's defense. The Broncos were opting to pass a lot this game, and the Hematite defensive line was licking their chops at the opportunity to sack Nick Javerick. There's Drake Asgard dragging him down by the jersey. Same drive, but this time it's Ty Koppinen who's going to be the one who brings him down. But it wasn't just tackling. The next Bronco possession, Otto Swanson tipping it up and catching it as well. Great individual effort from the linebacker running back dual threat Swanson. I say he's a dual threat, but let's have him speak for himself on this because the direct snap run to the right. Look at the big fellow making some nice cuts to find open field. Some Broncos were close, but no one could catch him. That's a 45-yard touchdown run for Swanson. A big win for the Hematites as they will advance to the second round of the playoffs defeating Bark River 48 to eight. Over in Calumet, home of the Copper Kings, it was a rematch of a week two game that saw the Copper Kings come out victorious. Nagani hoping to change their fortune in round one of the playoffs. Early on though, it was looking like it was just another round from week two. Calumet rushing in for the first score of the game on that far side. The future wasn't looking too bright for Nagani. The Miners, they just seemed to be outsized when they were on offense. The Copper Kings defense was brutal. Devastating on oh, Nash Hillier can't go anywhere. Disruptive, like I'm saying. Any other adjectives you can think of demonstrate just how ferocious and after it this defense was. And it wasn't just on the defensive line either. Early in the second quarter, Calumet's secondary getting in on the action, picking off the deep pass from Jason Waterman. Oy vey. Nothing was going right for Nagani in this one. Later in that drive, a little misdirection action going on for Calumet. Nobody knows where the ball is, not even our cameraman. And by the time they figure it out, He's already passed everyone else. That's a 52-yard touchdown run to put the Copper Kings on top four good. Calumet keeps their strong season alive. They advanced to round two after a strong win over Nagani, 42-14. to Elsewhere in 11-man, St. Ignace couldn't manage to pull off the upset against Beale City. The Saints dropped this one by a final of 49-22. to Tough to see a UP team lose to a non-UP team. That just hurts. Eight-man playoff football tonight as North Central hosted the Forest Park Trojans. First quarter, score 0-0, Forest Park with the ball on fourth down, and they get stuffed by that tough Jets defense. They really went for, the, for it all in this one, but, I mean, what does North Central not do right? Quarterback Tommy Pol uh, Peltman, excuse me, takes it for himself down the right side to get close to the goal line. Very next play, Forest Park trying to run again, but they get slammed by Leo Gorzinski. That whole Gorzinski family so brutal for North Central. But it won't matter because a few plays later, Peltima takes it in for the first score of the game. And look at that, 8 nothing Forest Park. Huh. But it's not going to be long, trust me, until Noah Gorzinski at quarterback. He's going to launch one downfield into traffic, but it's caught by his brother Luke Gorzinski for the huge Mondo gain. Next play, Noah dropping back. He's going to hit his brother once again for the long, long touchdown bomb. Scores now 8-8 eight, eight apiece in the second quarter. Not a high scoring first, but you know. It would get up there. Forest Park with the ball once again. And Peltima, one tough guy running through defenders to pick up first down yards and more. Oh, he broke a couple tackles there. I like to see it. But they would eventually give the ball back. And that's a bad thing as Gorzinski in the pocket. And he's going to use that big arm to find that sibling connection. Luke Gorzinski runs like Forrest Gump all the way down the sideline. Hopefully not into the locker room, though. All the way for the touchdown. Jets go on to defeat Forest Park 46-28 to move on in the playoffs. Taking a quick look at the other eight-man games going on today, Pickford is out for blood. They want a rematch with North Central, and Engadine isn't going to stand in their way. A big statement win for Pickford, 57-12. And over in Posen, Cedarville comes away with the upset. I like it. They beat the home team, Posen, by a final of 46-26. to And to end the football scores for today, Brimley went over to Sutton's Bay. And unlike Cedarville, they were unable to pull off the upset. Sutton Bay managed to sneak away with the win, 36-14. Now, we're going to take a look at the first conference game for the Northern Michigan hockey team as they're hosting Alabama Huntsville, the Chargers, in the first of a two-game series this weekend. Let's see how they handled it. Northern, they were coming into this one with a 5-1-1 one one record, while the Chargers trying to correct their season thus far, going, bouncing back after a rough outing against the Minnesota State. We're going to pick it up at 1-1 one one in the first period. 
and Alabama Huntsville's Connor Wood gets it out in front, gets this one over the glove of John Hawthorne, just in the nick of time, they go up 2-1. to one. Don't like to see that. Not long after, Chargers on the drive until Hank Sorensen brings them to a screeching halt. Oh, 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 there was an audible sigh in this newsroom after that. And that's where it would get chippy on the ice. Chargers trying to clear it. It's deflected onto the bench. And then there's some extra pushing at the end. You know, dear Mr. Linesman, maybe let the players fight. I don't know. It would be exciting, but, I mean, they're kids still. Next period, Wildcats on the attack. Sorensen gets the puck at the top of the circle and puts it on net. But Chargers goaltender Mark Sinclair makes the save after the faceoff. Captain Phil Ballou has it at the blue line, passes it over to Ty Redmond, sends it back to Ballou for the one-timer. And it's tipped in front by Griffin Loughran. Goes in, all knotted up at two. About a minute later, Ballou, the captain, he knows what to do, has it on his own end, makes the long pass up to Andre Gontis, who pulls it back and shoots it right past the defender, and it sneaks its way past Sinclair as well for the Wildcats' lead, 3-2. to two. They were going to keep it for the rest of the night as they go on to win this one, 5-3, and move on to 3-0 in WCHA play. These two teams will play again tomorrow at the Barry Event Center at 6 p.m.